Welcome to 5 Minutes in the Word, a daily devotional in the Word of God. Welcome back to 5 Minutes in the Word. Today we're in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I want us to start today in verse number 13. And I want us to talk today about Christ's return, about his second coming, uh, and how we can be ready for that day. You know, usually at the end of our five minutes in the Word, uh, we maybe say something along the lines of, you know, we want you to do this so that you can be ready. And that's something that is really important to me. I hope it's important to you. Uh, It's why we say it so often, because everything that we study, everything that we read, everything that we try to learn about God is for our application, it's for our life, it's for our improvement in God and for our obedience to his will so that when he's coming back, we will be ready. And that's what we kind of end a lot of our videos uh, that way, because we want you to understand that this is not just for, you know, uh, uh, a good thing to do. It's not just something that's going to be helpful for today. It's helpful for every day, uh, but it's going to be helpful for helpful for eternity. And that's what we, we're wanting. And this is something that uh, well, I think will bring us a lot of comfort today. It's something that I've heard uh, used in funerals, but it's also something that I think is applicable uh, for each and every day. And so turn with me to 1 Thessalonians 4, starting in verse 13. And I want us to read this together because I want us to have comfort. And that's what the word of God can bring. It can bring a lot of comfort to our hearts, to our souls. uh, And we need to see that. And this is one of those texts that just brings us so much comfort because Christ is coming back. And we need to see that. So starting in verse 13, it says, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. This is something that the people there in Thessalonica, that they really struggle with. They struggle with the fact that those that have, of the brethren struggle with, those that have gone on before, those that have passed away, that they might not get to experience uh, the, the joys of heaven and the you know, the uh, things that were kind of come about uh, when Christ returned. And so he's telling them, he said, uh, brethren, talking to the church, and and get this, this is brethren, this is church members, uh, that they were struggling with this. He said, concerning those who fall asleep, that you sorrow as others who have no hope. So he, they are sorrowing. He doesn't want them to sorrow, and he doesn't want them to sorrow as others that have no hope. And that's something we need to see too, is that all those people in the world that, that are lost, they have no hope. Uh, and when they die without that hope, they're they're being ready for an eternity of condemnation, uh, and we, we need to see that. And so that's something that as a, as a Christian, we need to be filled with hope. Uh, and that's something that you know we look forward to his return. Uh, we we call for his return because it's something that we should long for. But we don't need to be sorrowful as they're sorrowful because their sorrow is just going to lead to uh, you know more death and uh, uh, despair. But we we should look forward with hope, filled full, uh, even for those uh, that are gone away. Because when Christ returns, all those that are faithful, uh, whether they've passed on before or they're still living right now, uh, they will. Uh, be able to enter into him. And so it says there in verse 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, which is a very crucial thing uh, to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, even so God will bring uh, with him those who sleep in Jesus. And so we don't have to worry about those that have gone on before, those that have died in Christ, uh, that that they too can experience uh, what the, uh, the joys of heaven, what they will be. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. So he's kind of talking about an order there of judgment uh, and an order of, of our calling uh, to meet to meet the Lord. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. So this is talking about that, that great and glorious day. The Lord's coming back. He's going to uh, uh, descend to heaven. He's going to be there in the clouds, uh, the voice of the archangel, the trumpet of God. So this is going to be a day you're not going to miss. This is not going to be some secretive thing. Uh, this is something that everybody's going to experience. Uh, it says, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Uh, and what a wonderful comfort for those in Thessalonica and really those that especially struggle with this to understand. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive... Uh, and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, uh, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. So the dead in Christ to help the, those in Thessalonica, they're going to rise first. Uh, those that uh, that were have already passed on, uh, they're going to to rise first. Then those that are still living and remain, 
are going to be that are faithful. They're going to be uh, caught up to, together with them in the clouds uh, to meet the Lord in the air. Uh, and there, therefore, we will be able to be with the Lord forever. And that's a wonderful comfort uh, in the scriptures that we need to see. Uh, we need to see that Jesus rose from the grave. And by his death, burial, and resurrection, we can have uh, that resurrection as well. You know, when we're baptized, we're, we're, we're baptized into his death. Uh, and we rise to walk in newness of life. But on that great day, we will be able to rise up into the air uh, to be with the Lord forever. And that is such a great comfort. And so that's something that you need to think about in your Bible study. Uh, everything you're doing, everything we're reading, everything that we're uh, trying to do is to equip us for that day. But not just equip us for that day, to equip us for the here and now, for the ministry, as we're working, as we're living, that we may live for Christ uh, that we may follow his will and that we may obey him until Christ returns.